want to speak on the crime moment in our country. You see, there is a call for a national protest from youth consigns Nigeria. Of course, which is our constitutional right of those who want to protest, a civic right. The constitution permits you to protest in accordance to the constitution, not violating it. Let me say some things. Uh, some people might say there's politics, there's undertone to that. I don't want to agree with that. We, we are in a trying moment in the history of our country. The price of things have gone up. And um, transport fare, things have suddenly tripled and it's telling on the masses. Slow it down, please. It's only um, someone who does not know what is going on that we say uh, people are not feeling it. People are feeling it. To me, I see protest as a cry of a baby to a father, if done honorably and not dishonorably. One of the things I like about our current president is that he has a listening ear. Believe me or you don't believe me. He does. I feel if we we'll look at the decision of the removal of subsidy, it is good, which is nice. But you see, the poor man on the street, on the street who want to eat three square meat, two square meat, if at all people can eat one square meal, doesn't understand that if that does not translate to a food on the table. Once there's Ike in fuel, every other thing goes up. I stand to be corrected. If the price of commodities and things is going high and the federal allocation to governors is increasing, I think we should hold every governor in every state responsible. If the federal government does what they need to do, send money, it's not coming to the normal man. You know, when I hear people say, pastors should mind what they say. They should speak about church and spiritual things. This, they should not get themselves involved in politics. I, I think it's crazy to think that religious leaders should not lend their voice. We are only known when we when you are calling for peace? No. As a spiritual leader, I'm lending my voice that the government of the day should do something. If the money for subsidy is going, bringing more allocations to the governors and we are not seeing the effect. I'm not talking about the government government at the center. I'm talking about even the government at the state level. What are you doing with the money, SARS? Then, let the poor man not suffer for it. I bet you if the price of our fuel, diesel, and the rest come down, so many things will crash down. So me, it's my own polite way of saying this. If subsidizing our fuel we make the poor man at the street eat square meat. Now people are turning watermelon to tomatoes. 
People are turning carrots to tomatoes. People are turning cucumber to tomatoes. It's becoming, nobody should say that they are not feeling it. Except you are deceiving yourself. I might be able to eat well, feed well, take care of my family. What about the poor man on the street? Sometimes I wake up and I see my phone full of text, tears. Some people will do video and show their children, no, they have not eaten. The best thing to do for the masses of this country, bring down the price of fuel, price of commodity will come down, and then it benefits the poor. This 27, 32 billion to this governor to that, that does not reflect on the masses. How many trailers of rice will you give to a state that will change? We don't need palliative, we need, we need a decision that will keep the masses in perpetual peace, at least let them be able to feed their family. Nigerians are no beggars. We don't need rice for a day. And after that, we go back again, struggling. We don't need that palliative. A sustenance and a, a policy that brings people that they'll be able to eat, wake up, fed for themselves. I can tell you Nigerians are one of the kind of people that can endure cooperate with their government. I can tell you that. If not taken for granted. So I'm learning my voice. I started talking about this before this started. That I see something coming. And let me now talk. There's no country I can call my own. I am proud to be in Nigeria. And this is my country. Nigeria is my country. There's no other country I can call my country. This is my country. My father fought Biafra World, went for peacekeeping, and told me what it means to see war. Now I want to talk for those, to those who want to protest. Uh, please, let's deal with issues. Don't be an instrument in the hand of some aggrieved politician who don't see any good by seeing that every time it's our turn, it's our turn to eat, it's our turn to loot. I want to beg you, deal with issues. Talk about issues. Don't let them use you to create anarchy in this country. We don't pray for war. We don't pray for anarchy. Please, burning down government establishment establishment that we have used our hard-earned tax money to pay. It's not the way. Destroying facilities of government and we will still come back to build. That's not how to show agrivians. Let's deal with the issue. Talk about the issues. And there is a way to protest and you do it honorably. Honorably. So, this I know we have civilized, educated youth in this country. We are concerned. But please don't be borrowed. We don't pray for military this. We don't pray for that. Please go about anything you want to do. I beg you. Don't pray to see war. Don't pray to see anarchy in the country. Don't pray. Don't let anybody use you. Deal with the issues. You don't need to take advantage of this to put our innocent police, soldiers, Air Force, and all our security operatives in danger. They are also husbands and wives to many people. They are putting their life on the line to obey and to make sure there is law and order. We should, we should not know in the name of you want to protest, you now provoke the military people, stone them, loot, burn tire, and enter people as loot. That's no longer protest, that's criminality. Please. We should not pray to see war. Are we doing this? Because we have, I've just mentioned issues that we have in this country. Are we doing this? Because we are feeling the pain. Or we are trying to photocopy Kenya. What is the issue? Are we doing it because somebody is sponsoring us? Let's deal with the issues. If our spirits are pure and our demands are honorable, stick on the issues. I'm sure the government of the day 
we reasonably respond swiftly and we will get what we need to obtain. I've heard some, some preachers say, uh, 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 why say a government is the will of God? Uh, if a government is the will of God, uh, uh, they will not come in through the back door. You know, there are some immature, childish statement that is made by some preachers that does not make sense. You might not like the government of the day. It doesn't change it and that the person has been there. Whether you call it any, whatever you want to call it, he, that person is there. The constitution have recognized that person and is the president and whatever. Let's, let's treat what we have with respect. Simple. It's simple. You want to protest? Let's protest honorably. And I want to beg our military. It's of no use to kill human beings. Because we want to make a statement with the power of the gun. Let's be professional about how we handle lives and people. Because one simple pro provocation, it will turn a just defense into something else. Let's be professional. No life is worth taking in the midst of this protest. Nobody should take the life of anybody. Nobody should use bullets on any life. And I beg to disagree that people should not protest when it is their civil right. It's their right to protest and follow it according to the laws of the land. That's it. But please deal with issues. You don't have to call your president name, insult your president, destroy the country name, image and name. Then you will see all this, all this uh, 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 international outfit trying to present Africa as if Africa is in a bad light. Please, we can do this honorably and talk. But what is the purpose of the protest? To get the result. Target the result. You don't need to destroy Nigeria because you want to get result. When a surgeon takes a patient to the theater, they focus on the issue, the tumor, anything they want to take out. You cannot say because you want to cut some part of somebody that have a, a, a cancer, cancerous attack, then you cut the head, you cut the neck, and cut things that doesn't matter. Let's not branch into angles that does not matter. No building should be born. Nobody's shop should be looted. There are many Igbos who suffer during this time, looting and so many things. We don't need that. Deal with issues. And if you feel like there is no reason, don't do follow, follow, because people are following if your heart says it's okay, stay at home. I beg you. Don't jump into what you don't understand. You should understand it to do it. And please, if they are giving you money to cause havoc, to cause havoc in Nigeria, then you know. When you mother sleep, you will sleep no more. This is your country. This is your country. They can deport you from any other country. They will bring you back to Nigeria. If you set this country on fire, you will come into the fire. The truth is, if there is employment in this country, <laughs> if somebody who is collecting money will not be on the street. If our youths are paid well, people go to school, they are graduate, they have PhD, they have masters, they don't have anything. African leaders, wake up! Wake up! That's the truth, wake up! Build good hospitals at home! We are tired of these overseas trips. When you have the money to build good hospitals here, yeah. wake up. This is our home. Wake up. The money we are accumulating and stealing, African leaders, even when you die, you can't finish the money. These are the provocations. Your end, even though somebody wants to bring you down, if you do what is right, nobody can bring you down. Good leadership sells itself. See, we used to pray and we have been praying for Nigeria. Now, we'll be talking. Because you see, prayer, we are prayed. Let us now talk. Let's talk.
let's talk. <laughs> Suffering and smiling is one of the reasons why we have gotten here. If we started shouting from the past regime, from the past regime, we will not get to where we are now. You say, ah, this man of God is talking now. He's, but I study political science in, in school, so it's my field too, I can talk. You cannot just sit down. One of the great problems we have in Nigeria and in Africa is systemic failure. Everything, system, leadership, systemic failure. I enter, I put my brother, not competency. I put this, I put, it's time for us to eat. Oh yeah, everybody come and eat. Kuzo, Kuzo, Kuchua Binchi, let's eat. That's what we do. So we eat, we, we see it as our turn. So that's why we don't understand this issue. If we, if we continue like this, things will not change. Things will not change. Believe me. God is keeping this country and this country must do. How can we have four refineries and no one is working? And we keep having billions, billions voted for it. And there are staffs in that refinery collecting salary. And I don't know what they are collecting salary for. Ah, we keep quiet here. God will help us. We need leaders with will who will stand. This is not about him. Ibo, Aousao, Yoruba, we need leaders with will to stand, to talk. Me, I will say my own. This is the only way I can say my own. And every one of us, it's time to talk. If we don't talk, our children, children will suffer it. But say, in the name of protest, we want to bring the country down. We will, we will not allow you to do that. We will speak against you. This country is our country. And this is not about one man. If you have your hatred for one man, keep it to yourself. Leave Nigeria. When it is time, you can now begin to do. We talk about electoral reforms, everything. I, I can see that the current government has uh, have won the case uh, with the governors on the autonom autonomy of the uh, of local government. That's, that's the way to go. Things is get put in shape. And let us pray that we should have a time where the president will not elect the INEC chairman the there will be a procedure where there's the independency of the INEC and the rest. Fine. We will get there step by step. Step by step is, is a step in progress. But one thing is every one of us, as we pray, we should talk and walk. This is our country. Nobody should join to pull Nigeria down. We should talk about issues, but not to destroy this country. Because this is our home. And this is where we will come to. Even those who are old, after they are old in America, everywhere, they think of coming back home. And if you have a problem, if they want to deport you, where will they deport you to? To Nigeria. At least you will come back home. You will go to your village and see your people. If you scatter Nigeria, where will you go to? Sometimes I feel for our security operatives. You know, in the midst of these protests, people who are gone, and they just want to make sure there is law and order. And then you see people start stoning them, stoning them with boot, stoning them with... You, you don't need to do that. These men are just there to protect. And you should understand, they obey command. Please. You don't need to, you don't need to stone a policeman, tear their uniform, and provoke them. That's not the person ruling you, leading you. That's not your governor. That's not your, that's the policeman. He's just sent there. The soldier is sent there to make sure that lives are not lost. Please, let's not hate our security men, police, soldiers, and the rest. When we see them and we are protesting, you are bitter. You start stoning them. You see them like they are the president you hate or the governor you hate. Please, many, many policemen who also go to the same market you go to, soldiers who also go to the same market you go to, have lost their lives. You've left, you've made them to become widow. You stone them, but no. These are all the things that lead to provocation. A policeman cannot stand and see. Two, two people have also hit his policeman down. These are what lead to provocation. Don't provoke them. Do what? Deal with issues. Speak to issues. When you speak to issues, leaders will listen. They will listen. 
Nobody says they are not listening. The body language everywhere is showing that everybody is concerned about the protest. You no know, one will talk like this in the church. Ah, they are not supposed to talk like this in the church. They are not supposed to talk like this in the church. As if you don't go to market because you come to church. As if you don't eat because you come to church. Now that you come to church, you came to church, you put water in your, in your car, camp, car tank. You just carry water and pour and you drive down here. Give Jesus a clamp offering. <laughs>